aspiring record and gear nerds of the internet. If you're looking to buy a record player, choosing one can be a super big headache because there's like a billion of them out on the market. And if you don't know what you're looking at, they all look the same and they all look different at the same time. Today, I'm going to teach you how to decide which record player to buy. And if you stick around to the end, I will show you what I think is a pretty decent deal on what is a pretty decent turntable. Coming up. Six in the morning. So there's a saying that says, give a man a fish and he eats for a day. Teach a man how to pick his own turntable and he won't be able to eat ever again because he'll spend all his money on records. I think that's how that goes. I might be wrong. Anyway, so the first thing to think about when you're picking a turntable are your priorities. As someone actually said, uh, there are no solutions, only trade-offs. A lot of buying a turntable is what is your budget and what are you willing to compromise on? Because no matter what, unless you have tens of thousands of dollars, you're going to be compromising on something. In this economy, I think everyone is concerned about budget. Well, most everybody. Unless, again, you can afford one of those $100,000 turntables, which uh, is no one I know. If you can afford that, you're not watching this video. But that being said, if budget is your main concern, if you're really looking to do this as cheaply as possible, I'm going to say something that's going to be crazy, that maybe vinyl just isn't for you. I know, that sounds bad, right? But... Once upon a time, vinyl was like a value proposition. You could go out and you could find cheap vintage gear, and people used to basically just give away records. But now it's like this extravagant money pit where no matter what, you're going to be dropping lots and lots of money on records. And if your primary focus is on value, records and vinyl is just not the best idea. I mean, you can get a subscription to Apple Music or Spotify for like, I don't know, what is it, $10 a month? And that'll serve you better in the long run than going through this hassle. But really, the hassle is part of the fun. It might be all the fun. It's most of the fun. Anyway, but fear not, we live in a vinyl renaissance. A new golden age of vinyl. You just need to be smart about it. Now, if I haven't already scared you off and you're still watching this video, with your budget in mind, what are your trade-offs? If you buy the right table, you can buy better sound quality down the road and keep that table, but your budget is going to dictate how good of a table you're going to have out of the box. And I will tell you some features that you should be looking for, and maybe more importantly, the things you should be avoiding. Now, my first suggestion is to immediately eliminate any table with the red cartridge of death. I have a video on why you shouldn't buy a cheap turntable, and this is the primary reason of why you shouldn't buy one. The long story short is that it sounds really bad, and the amount of tracking force that this cartridge requires will prematurely wear your records. If you see a record player with this cartridge, immediately you should think that it's a no-go. It is not worth your money. I don't care if it's $50. I don't care if it has all these cool features like Bluetooth and can make eggs for you in the morning. A lot of those features you don't want because any money that they spend on features like Bluetooth is money they're not putting into actually making a good sounding record player. Then I would eliminate any turntables that don't have future-proof features. And by future-proof, I mean you should try to find a turntable that will grow with you in the hobby. One where you can upgrade the cartridge, you can upgrade uh, Phono preamp and the RCA cables. That way, you're not just spending $100 on a turntable that as you get deeper into the hobby, you're going to have to replace or throw out because it's garbage. A lot of what they're making is just a landfill waiting to happen. So primarily, we want to avoid doing that. I would say the number one feature that you're going to look for is that it has a standard cartridge mount with adjustable tracking force. Those two things are extremely important. That way you can upgrade your cartridge down the road and you can verify that the cartridge that you've installed is going to not damage your records. 
Another thing that you might want to consider is something that has RCA cables that you can detach. I wouldn't buy any turntable where you couldn't detach your RCA cables. A lot of them have them built in. That could be a problem. And if you ever have an issue with those, rather than being able to replace them, you could either repair them, which is probably going to cost more than the turntable, or you get rid of it, which again, we're trying to avoid landfill here, people. And then any turntable that has a built-in phono preamp, which isn't usually the good ones. Good ones don't have phono preamps almost by default, but there's a lot of okay tables that do. You just want to make sure that you can defeat it and turn it into a line level output. So that way down the road, if you want to upgrade to a phono preamp, that actually is going to be a lot better sounding. You have that ability. Now we've just disqualified a whole lot of tables like most any table you're going to find at Target or Walmart. A lot of the ones that you'll even find at Best Buy. A lot of favorites. A lot of people love certain turntables. They recommend certain budget turntables. I'm telling you not to buy those. We're not buying those. Because we're looking for quality products that will grow with us. But listen, now we know what not to buy. Remember, it's better to tell the truth. And that's no lie. Now we know. And knowing is half the battle. Now that we've narrowed down the features to what we want to have, let's talk about features we may want to have that are going to be better, but in most cases, it's going to cost you a little bit more money. Ideally, you want to have the ability to adjust the anti-skate. The physics of a turntable is such that when you put a record on, you get that thing spinning, you put the needle on it, the physics of it is going to want to drag it into the inside of the record. And what that's going to do is it's going to wear the inner groove of the record. It's actually going to make that a little bit louder too because it's going to have more force on that and it's going to have less force on the outer groove. And then it's also going to potentially damage your cartridge. It's going to be pulling that cartridge in and it's going to be bending your cantilever potentially outward. So a lot of the turntables you find in the budget category will have an anti-skate sort of set up as a default that you can't really change. That's okay for most of the time because at least you have some anti-skate. But ideally, it would be great for you to be able to set it yourself. The other thing that would be really nice, but I haven't really seen this feature in a lot of sub $500 turntables, is the ability to change the vertical tracking angle, or the VTA. So the VTA is basically a fancy way of saying the height of the tone arm. So if you think about the height of the tone arm, the pivot point at which it's going to sit on the record is going to determine the angle in which the needle sits in the groove and so that can have a really huge factor potentially in how well the cartridge is going to track it's also going to change the characteristics of the sound of the turntable since all cartridges have a slightly different height profile ideally you want to be able to adjust them when you replace the cartridge so having the ability to modify the vta easily is something that is a great idea but again you don't really see it that often and really, I want to say budget friendly, but a lot of people aren't going to think that $500 turntables are budget friendly. But in the world of turntables, a $500 turntable is a budget turntable. As shocking as that may be. Don't tell my wife, she'll be shocked. So another feature you might want to consider is if you're going to want to have multiple different cartridges, all cartridges sound different. And then they also make mono cartridges as well as stereo cartridges. And a feature that might be handy if you're such a person is you can have a detachable head shell. Normally this comes on turntables that sort of have that DJ look to them that are designed to be DJ turntables. I would try to avoid DJ turntables. A lot of time those are going to have what's called a direct drive motor. And unless you're spending over a grand to get like a Technics 1200, one of the, the, the better ones of those, it's going to be a pretty bad direct drive motor. And ideally you want to have your motor decoupled as much as possible from your record player because the vibrations 
that the motor can generate could cause instability with the way that the record player functions and causes stuff like wow and flutter. I'm not going to say that direct drive motors are always bad, but in the lower end, I would try to tell you to avoid those type of turntables. If it's a DJ turntable that has a belt drive, I would say that would be preferable, again, unless you're buying a Technics 1200, which will be a better quality. I would probably still prefer one that isn't direct drive. That's just my belief is that a belt driven turntable is more optimal than a direct drive. Another thing that you'll see, especially in DJ type turntables are S-shaped tone arms. That's not really a thing that's important. Some people claim that they're better. I don't know that they're any better. I don't think that they're worse either. At the end of the day, it's just sort of a different style that you may or may not be into. I don't love the aesthetic of a DJ turntable, but some people are into that. And if that's your aesthetic, then they offer a lot of the features that we care about. And sometimes you can get them pretty inexpensively because places that sell guitars, like Guitar Center or Sweetwater or Musician's Friend might carry those and they might be on sale. So you might be able to get those at a pretty good price. Some other features you might want to be wary of is any turntable that you have to lift up the platter to go from 33 to 45. Those are a pain in the butt. I would recommend avoiding those turntables. I would look for something either with a switch or something where the belt can be easily accessed from outside of the platter. Some of those you can buy speed regulators, but why, why, why? Just avoid those options to begin with. Another thing you want to consider when you're looking at a turntable is what kind of cartridge comes on it. It's almost certainly going to be a moving magnet cartridge, but if it's a brand name cartridge, you really want to do some research on that. Do a Google search for reviews on it and make sure that it has good reviews. The problem with a lot of the budget cartridges is that people who don't have a lot of experience with cartridges are going to have reviews and they're probably all going to be awesome. So ignore the ones that say they're awesome and look at the ones that are more critical. That's really just a good piece of advice for anything that you're looking at in terms of reviews online. People love to love the things that they just bought, which can be sometimes helpful, but is more often than not completely useless. Another consideration might be buying a turntable that has a cover, which you might think they all have covers, but that's not accurate. The one that I have is a VPI Scout. That doesn't have a cover. You can buy one separately. They cost a lot of money. There are ways to get around needing a cover, Primarily, you want to keep dust off the platter, but ideally, it's going to have a cover. So, I promised that I would give you what I think is probably the best deal right now on a turntable. And here it is. Right now, you can get this for $150. This is basically a project, or project, I still haven't figured out the right way to say that, E1 that was specially made for this company and with the features that is available for 150 bucks for a project made in Czechoslovakia or wherever they make them in Europe they make them somewhere in Europe I think it's impossible to beat this turntable even at the price of $200 which is they draw it was originally I think over three now it's under two uh, I don't think you can find a better turntable I've never actually listened to one of these but just based on the fact that Project makes it and that it has all the features that we're looking for. Now this doesn't have a built-in phono preamp, so you're gonna have to buy a phono preamp, but you can do that fairly inexpensively. There's a lot out there under a hundred bucks. If you need some suggestions, ask me and I'll, I'll throw some options out there. But this I think is the best deal going right now. There are other options like Fluence and U-Turn that make decent turntables in the sub $300 range. I think I'm gonna do videos on Fluence and U-Turn, how I would buy those potentially. So keep an eye out for those videos. But 
Should also say that I have no affiliation with Andover Audio, nor do I have an affiliation with B and H. They're just clearing these things out, and uh, you should be on it because that's a good deal.